I'm Josh Golden, and this is Eureka, where we explore big ideas and how they came to be. Today on the show, we're going to talk to the Impractical Jokers, Sal, Murr, Q, and Joe, all of which are upstairs and about to shoot another episode in season eight. I can't wait to hear what they have to say. Warning, the following program contains scenes of graphic stupidity among four lifelong friends who compete to embarrass each other. So you get the navigation or... Joe, get to every question, say, let me go ask my manager, get out of the car and come back. Regular old tennis. (laughs) Jump right now on the table, jump! (laughs) They just can't get comfortable. (laughs) Most people know you as James Q, Joe, and Sal, and the Impractical Jokers is is this crew you've created. One of the things I love the most about um, figuring out about a big idea is, was there a moment of inspiration? I think about Lin-Manuel Miranda, right? He's, he's on the beach, he's got Hamilton. At page 622, he's like, wait a second, could this, be a, could this be a musical? So for you guys, for Impractical Jokers, was there a moment back in high school, I'm guessing, of, yeah. of like there was a, an idea or, or a moment of serendipity that allowed you to sort of develop what Impractical Jokers is today. There was the four of us, we went to high school together, like you said, and we were in history class, and we were actually learning about uh, Alexander Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, we were in, and page 620. The parallel. 624. 624, 624, 624, 625. We turned to each other and said, you know what? <laughs> is there a hidden camera? Emotion, there's a hidden camera idea here. <laughs> <laughs> and we did the, fa- I don't know if you saw the failed pilot, Hamilton does pranks. I don't know if you yeah. saw yeah, I missed it. I missed it. That's we call them hammer great. pranks. Yeah. <laughs> we eventually really took, on. No. We eventually took Hamilton out of the show and became a black <laughs> Yeah. No, because he was like slow and boring and he was an old guy. No, for us, I think, it really just spawned from friendship, making each other laugh, because our show is basically just that. Our show is the four of us having a good time and making each other laugh more than it is anything about Hidden Camera or other people. It really is just this embarrassment type of comedy that we always use throughout right. our friendship to entertain each other. So, At such a young age, we experience the, 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 gen, the, uh, you know, the, whatever one feels high school is, whatever they assign to high school, that experience, Moment of like had. my life of yeah, like, I'm, not, it, I'm not cool. All, all, the, all the, the, the good, the bad, <laughs> you know, the bruises and the fun times. Like, but like that, that high school is such a moment in time. And we were in that vacuum together, and I, I. It's not that we were these crazy pranksters or anything, but we went to an all boys Catholic high school, and we had that four year experience in our hometown, and it kind of like I think informed maybe our personalities, maybe the way we interact with people. There's definitely some of that in there, mm. and um, I'm not sure if our relationship or the show would be exactly the same if we weren't anchored from our freshman year at 13 years old of high school. I think that plays into our dynamic. We here at Delmonico Steakhouse. I feel like the next person who walks in just won't have the right energy for no, Delmonico. No, not the right energy. Oh, wow. Bad energy coming in, Bad Sal. energy. Reservation. I'm sorry. It's not the right energy for tonight. Oh. <laughs> Was there anything else? Was there anything else? <laughs> I do, I realize it's just not the right energy. Oh. All right, I'll allow it. I don't know. I'll allow it. <laughs> oh, he's a champ. I love him. They'll lay low. Obviously, there's something that happens when you realize, oh my God, this is, is this thing going to work? Because you, you all had j- day jobs, right? You were, can you share your day job yeah. before you? I was a baby uh, salesman. I sold, so I, sold, babies. Yeah. I sold high in baby gear, baby furniture for a company here. Uh, I was working six years and I had become the training program manager. I was actually the first one who had to quit my job though because they wouldn't give me a leave of absence or anything. So I was the first one who jumped all in. I had to either make the decision because when we took the, did the pilot, they gave me the two weeks off to shoot the pilot, but then I needed six months off. So I talked to my the CEO and I said, hey, I need six months off. And she's like, oh, so you're quitting? I was like, no, I just need six months off. Just six months. <laughs> I'm just looking for And she was like, no, she's like, you know, you'll always be welcome back if it doesn't work out, but I have to replace you. So I was like, all right. And I talked to them. I was like, I have to quit. So we got to make this work. Oh my God. So I jumped in and quit and worked and really dove into the whole production part of it. I ran development for the TV company that sold the show. I was the uh, head of development, SVP of development for North South Productions, which um, is the producer of Jokers. So my job was to create and sell TV shows. That was convenient. And I did it, uh, it was convenient. <laughs> it did help set the meetings. Uh, but you know, that was, uh, and I kept that job through most of the series. Uh, only in the past two years did I kind of transition out of it, finally, uh, wow. from pitching. 
Two. Q? Two. Uh, I was a fireman, actually. I was with the FDNY. I'd done about eight years. And the first two seasons of the show, I was still working in the firehouse. So it was like we would shoot, and then I would go to the firehouse, work all night, come to set, shoot, then go back to the firehouse, work all day, and work all night, and then shoot, and then have a night off, and then be off from the TV show, but then have to go to the firehouse yeah. during the day. So the first two years of the show, it was like, it was... It was zombie. It was, it was very zombie-esque. <laughs> Sal, what, would you, what did you do? At the time we got the show, I, I owned a, was a co-owner of a bar music venue. Uh, it was a long journey there. I had a degree in finance, and out of school, I was a, eventually became a business systems analyst. I left that wow. in about 2002 to bartend so I could focus on comedy. We used to make fun of him because we'd be trying to shoot, and he'd be on the phone with beer distributors and ordering, stuff like like that, ordering for the bar and yeah. stuff. I need 12 cases of Heineken. Yeah, yeah, like that. We'd be like, Sal, we gotta go, we gotta go. He's, like, He's like, I'm like, doing, I'm doing work. Mike's hard work. lemonade. I need 10. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah, it was eight, eight years I was bartending when we got the pilot. We shot the pilot, I was bartending, and then somewhere in between the show getting picked up, I was like, I, I couldn't put all my eggs in that basket, and I didn't really know, so I, I was always training to, to own the bar. I was managing the one I was at, and I was like, all right, I like this, and this is what I'm good at. So I ended up buying, um, buying into a bar, and then just, uh, just a couple of weeks later, we found out that the show got picked up. <laughs> oh, nice. So uh, it was a new business and a new show, like, kind of like Q. It's like all the efforts go in there, and I, I, I was able to maintain that for about two years. So the second se after the second season, I think we all like, took this leap of faith, and uh, I left it in the second season. At the end of the second season, I left my job, and I've been doing this ever since. So speak about that then. So there, is that your moment that you knew it was going to work? Is there, maybe it was during the first season. Tell me the, the moment you're like, oh my god, this is, this is going to be a thing. The more we did this, the more I fell in love with it, and the more I was like, I need to, I need to just commit to, to this life, right. whether it's on this show or not. And so then I left. That was scary. I, I was, it's still scary. Like, it's still scary. Yeah. For me, it was, there was a distinct moment. <clears throat> we, we started touring pretty early on, maybe in season two. You think season three as, we started, the, as the tenderloins? We started touring. Well, in Practical Jokers, tenderloins. You right. know, we started touring in comedy clubs first, and uh, and we season did one. Was season, season one? one? Yeah. Why do you season one? Yeah, yeah. Like the, yeah. yeah. We, we started performing comedy clubs, and then pretty well, quickly we started the Gramercy here in New York. But yes. how did you translate the show? How did you know that the show was going to? Well, we well, come we, from live performance. Yeah, we come right. from a live performance background, right. so we always wanted to perform on stage, and uh, and and it's the live tour. That the, the, the first that's the, really the first time I felt like, wow, this is this is working. It's affecting people because the tour quickly went from comedy clubs to within a year we were doing small theaters. Yeah. Within two years we're doing middle sized theaters, and then now we're six seven years into touring and arenas we're doing and arenas. And um, my goodness, and, and and it's the live tour that I, I felt like for the first. It was I remember the moment. It was summer two thousand fourteen. We had been on TV for three years at that point, and uh, some. We were on set, or maybe you and I were still living together, or something. Like, and I said, we had just come back from tour, and and I couldn't believe the, the response from fans because you don't feel it when you film the TV show. It's a hidden camera show. We're hidden in the back. Yeah. We don't feel how it affects people in their normal lives. And uh, and I said, well, one of us said, do you guys feel like things are different? Things are changing. It was a distinct moment that summer, and we all kind of said, yeah. And then I remember we had this conversation a few times over the over a few years that it felt like every six months our lives were changing. Then it felt like every three months our lives were changing. Mm. And then on a monthly basis, yeah. something different was. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. That I can use. How many? Does in that hallway? Thanks. Appreciate it. That is cool. That is so cool. Sorry. Do you have a bit that people come to you and say, I just love that bit. Is there a bit? That Novocaine, uh, the Novocaine punishment, where they inject him with the Novocaine and I had to teach a cooking um, class. Delightful glass of Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Larry, hands down. Larry, Larry the, and Scoopski Patatas. The, those, those are the ones I, I really hear about the most, but hands down, you know, people think my name's Larry. Larry, 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 Larry. Larry. Larry! 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 Oh my god. Larry! 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 
<laughs> I hear dentists the most. The most? A after nine years, I hear it the most still. I have a, an affinity for that moment. When people ask me, I tell them that that, that is my favorite moment. Uh, I think that it just encompassed everything, the, the best of everything the show has to offer in one moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're definitely gonna be able to fix it. If you wanna do it, you wanna do it today. <laughs> so I, I like to think about when you were starting the journey of the show. Tell me the story of, of the pitch uh, to True TV. We did a sizzle reel on our iPhones. I just went out and decided let's get some of what we thought the show would be on a on like embarrassing ourselves and each other out. Right, in give me the age so I, so I can get the frame. Well, this is uh, 2010. 2010. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we, we uh, go into uh, we went into the Regal Cinemas in Times Square to uh, Tyler Perry Victoria presents Secret. something. Victoria's yeah, Secret. Victoria's Secret. That we had to try on. Make sure they know the bra and panties yeah. you're shopping for, for you. And we have those cheap little pens yeah. that oh, you can buy the spy pens. with the hidden camera thing. So oh, we put oh, it in our pocket. Oh, yeah. God. And it's like we were talking, we were trying on bras and We Victoria's had the benefit Secret. when we shot it. And we, we had, we already knew what we were going into. We created the tape. And we watched the tape and we we're like, that's funny. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it's <laughs> kind of like a leg up to go in with a tape that you already know is funny because you control that portion. And if you're going in with something you're holding in your hand that you know is undeniable, because that's all we that's the only barometer we have, right? What we think is funny. And so everything we've done before it, all the videos we made before kind of trained us to be like, oh, the beats are right here, the moments are right. It'll be hard for someone not to agree this is funny. Every joke in our show works you five times. Right now? Yes, I do. First, show. the guy in the back says it through the microphone. Let's see you do this. Turn to the bride and ask her, what style was your first wedding dress? Then you cut to the guy in the field that has to think about, can I do this? <laughs> then he decides to do it or not. Now this one's flowy. Fourth is the people in the back laughing. And the fifth is how the mark reacts to that oh moment as well. At the beginning of every season, we say, okay, what can we do different? And we were able to open a lot. <coughs> and when, when some of those ideas opened up, like we changed the goal. Because if you talk to anybody nowadays, how do you explain the, the show, right? Oh, it's these four friends, they put something in their ear and they tell each other what to say and do. That is a third of our show, a third out of 200, right? The ideas, the other challenges we have, the goals are different, the punishments are never that. So yeah. it's like, it's crazy that people, that's how the, this is the easiest way to get people to get the idea, but that's not what our show is. And from our perspective, I was like, what else can we do? Mm -hmm. So when we came up with stuff like, what if we make the goal you can't laugh? Or what if we team up? Or like all these little innovations. Like I remember the first time we said, "Oh, we were working. At, we were working at a. It was like a subway or something." We're like, "Oh, what if what if we put two of us back there? Could we get could we get two earwigs?" Somewhere. And we rented two earwigs. And it was yeah. like, "Oh my God, you both could hear us!" Like little things Changed like that. The whole, the, the whole game. <laughs> There's always a little something, and every time that worked. Mm. And that was when we're like, "Oh, okay. As long as we do that, you see that reaction. That's one little cue. Let me sell the show." Hey. <laughs> One <big> show. <laughs> we sell the show. And then we go and we make the pilot. And then some stuff started happening on the pilot that were even funnier than the tail yeah. tape. We just fell into it kind of lucky, luckily. And then we're like, oh, wow, that's really funny. Like, okay, maybe we do have something. And then it airs. And people take to it a little bit. And you're like, all right, maybe, maybe they like it. But you never really are like, this is it. Because you, you just always feel like it can go away at any time. Mm -hmm. And then first season, you're like, all right, we got that season. And they order the second. Okay, maybe they like it. And then still two isn't really, it's still. Now, do you feel comfortable now? Do now feel, I no. think we're past that point of looking back saying we've created something comfortable. I'm not. But, we, 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 <laughs> but, but, it's, but, it, but it took years. It took years of the show being on for me to be like, we did it. It, it is a business. So when True was like, all right, well, we had the contract for five. Now we, we want to re-up with you. Like that was, a, that was putting their money where their mouth is. And that. That to me was when I was like, okay. That was they, that, they, you're like, I know this is gonna be a thing for sure. I know they're gonna, at least season five, <laughs> they're gonna give me more money than they gave me for season four, and like, that's it, you know what I mean? That, that's it, so for me it was the re-upping around, around. That's the, great. The Eureka moment was uh, uh, 11 years of failure <laughs> and the wrong formats for shows that did not put our strengths forward after learning from 11 years of failure from other pilots, mm. uh, and we finally realized the right format and the right timing to put our strengths forward. That, that when we create jokers, that's it. it. It puts our friendship on display. We never came up with a format before then that put our friendship as well on display. Best friends forever! I want to state officially that I love you. I love you guys. I love you, buddy. I love you. Oh! Oh!
<laughs> Sit. Good guys. You, you stay! Oh. You stay! Today we are going to figure out which one of you three is my best friend. Former best friend. I hate you guys! <laughs> How do you characterize success? Now that you're here versus, you know, season one. I mean, obviously you have a, you've had a job in 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 the world of production, so you you think about it differently. Well, I have a unique perspective from the other guys, I think, because I I, I worked in TV development for ten years, right? Uh, running development for the company. So in that time, I'd sold a lot of different shows, uh, pilots and series, and most shows don't sell. Then most shows that get get a pilot order don't go to series, mm. and most shows that get a season order don't go to season two or three. Mm. You know, like ninety nine percent of shows just don't make it. They don't pop. Nothing happens. You know. I, so I have a, a, a unique perspective on right. uh, on how unbelievable this is mm. uh, from a business point of view. Yeah, it, it, it just doesn't happen anymore, especially now. When we finished filming the pilot, the, our favorite thing about it that we thought made it work too was that we didn't have to act. Remember that? We were like, oh, we just, we were ourselves. And that, that carries yeah. through to this. You see us, you see us on TV. We're not really acting unless we want to for something. But that was the thing that I personally was most nervous. I'm an atrocious actor. So I was so nervous about <laughs> that. Not. I was like, I, I appreciate that. I word. think you're yeah. a fabulous actor. Yeah, because I'm being me. So I was, <laughs> in that moment, I think that was a big thing. And I remember having a lot of offline conversations, especially with with Sal about it, and I was like, you know, I just want to make sure that we get what's funny, and what's funny is us. And I think when we were done with the pilot, and we saw the finished product, and we were like, oh, we didn't really even try, which I don't even mean it that way, but you know what I mean? It wasn't like yeah. we weren't putting anything on. Yeah. You're just well, you. And that, when we saw we could just be ourselves, I feel like that was a big moment. We, we maybe had the, like five failed pilots, yeah. and they were scripted, and we were acting, we were trying to do all these things, we had some game shows, we had all these things, and then we said, uh, and we're like, what, what, what we, we, we'd still come and be like, well, we're not masters at this. Yeah. We're trying it. And what are we masters at? Well, we we can, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. Being you, nobody could nobody could be me more than I could be me. Yeah. And so when we when we said if we could just show up and have no pressure to do anything, mm. but what we do, like so, nothing. There's no wrong. Mm. That was like then we we realized the confidence. Mm. In what we were creating that we didn't have before, and and that that gives you a, a roadmap. And we were like, and then it was so easy to be like, no, that's not right. Yeah, that's right. That's not right. That's right. And we kept whittling down and streamlining this idea. And I think that kind of we, we honed it by way of saying that we didn't have to do anything that we weren't familiar with before. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. What True said that they responded to was all the moments after the jokes where we were genuinely having fun. Mm. And that was when we took the meeting at True. Uh, they talked to us about us and, and liking what we did. This is fun. We are the voice coming through the intercom. Sal's got to bear the brunt of what we say. All right, here we go. We have someone? Hi, welcome to White Castle. What can I get you, face? <laughs> Do you have a vision for where it could go uh, when you joined? Well, I think I think the guys' chemistry, I think is, you know that that's lightning in a bottle and uh, that that is hard to replicate and that's truly unique. That this isn't something that was trying to be forced. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, they didn't just cast four comedians. Right. But these guys, uh, this is natural for them. Right. And, and that, therefore, that alone can propel it to go on for forever. Dedication means something and is different to each of us. So we don't necessarily have the same exact maybe definition of dedication or mm -hmm. the same exact motivations. But I think all of that had to be in line for each of us to stay the course, to take the leap of faith, to be able to be with each other 24-7, 365, mm -hmm to, you know, because there's just so many family life and, you know, financial stuff and, and, and just what your goals are, what you want, what's fulfilling to you. Mm. You know, motivations and what fulfills us isn't the same for all of us. Right. But we each had to find what it was within that and, and stay the course with each other. And so I just think that, like, whatever each of our individual determinations and drives was, it was about all of us finding that and then being greater than the, the sum Right. You know, and so staying the course, working within what you wanted to be fulfilled with, mm -hmm. but and then also understanding how that applies to the three of us and being considerate of that. Mm -hmm. And just having, you know, having the, the faith, the good fortune, the luck, the opportunity, just all those things converging. And, and it seemed easy because we just got lucky. 
there's a million people out there that could do this, that have ideas that 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 are ready and primed to go, that could be entertaining us that we'll never know. Right. We're just lucky. We're just mm. lucky. Opportunity meets preparedness and all that jazz and everything like that. And it, it is, I, I think it's a one in a billion chance. Like, it, it, yes. as much as it seems it's easy, low. it's just winning the lottery. So we won the lottery. And, and then we, we figured out how to not go broke after winning the lottery, which is what you hear, you know, a lot of people do when they win the lottery. They don't know what to do with it. And somehow we got lucky, and then we got lucky in figuring out how to maintain it. We are never satisfied with what we've done, we keep trying to innovate every single season and push the format further and further and twist it in new and interesting ways. And we made a gentleman's agreement at the beginning of the show, if we ever feel we're not creating great work or changing the show or advancing the show in some way, we're keeping it relevant, if we're not, if we're dialing it in or faking it, we stop it. The, the ideas are uh, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, but it, so it's six weeks of pre-production yeah, we work hard. to get to the actual. Well, it's six weeks of pre-production, but it's life. Like we're always together and we'll think of something anywhere and we'll just jot down a note send a text, do whatever. I'll, I'm always in contact with our head writers in our writer's room and like, hey guys, what about this? Like, think about this. And then when we come into pre-production, they'll have a wall. Uh, yeah, like eight months worth of, oh, this is something you said do you want to try or things like that. So we're always thinking about the show because we're always together too. Can you tell me, just repeat for me the story of that moment when you were playing the pilot for True TV and that moment where you're where you're realizing that someone else is finding this yeah. funny. Yeah, it was interesting. For me, I edited it. So I had seen it and worked on it. And when we made it, I was like, holy cow, this is really funny. And one moment that stands out to me is after I get up and I tell this theater of moviegoers that I farted and excused myself, we come out and it wasn't even really a part of it, but Sal is in legit tears, laughing, explaining why it was funny to me and it's on camera. And I was like, let's put this in the tape. Let's have that moment, so, which is really, if you look at it, it's really our BTS. From that moment, we decided we should look at and see why what we think is funny in each other. And, right. and so for me, when we saw that, and then to see her to react to that moment and look at Sal with tears in his eyes laughing about something that we did was funny, and then look at the exec that's going to buy it and literally be losing, losing it. And I was like, okay, this is, this is it. Yeah, this is going to work. I feel really lucky to be you should. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if we're gonna be honest, <laughs> legend in front of you. So, well, I, legends. I, I very much have loved and have supported the show in every way possible, and I, I just love the idea, and I love what you've been able to create, and, and I just want to thank you for oh, dude, the time thank today. Thank so, thank you. Thank uh, you. Get him, guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Joe.